um this video is specifically made for people who are writing IELTS so if you're a nurse and then you're actually writing IELTS then this video is actually going to talk about IELTS writing test um if you're not a nurse I, I must say that this video may not be beneficial to you for now the other videos on my channel i will entreat you to watch um, but then if you know any nurse um, who actually desire to work in an english speaking country like the uk the uhc canada um australia then you can share this video to him or her because um whatever i'm going to talk about now is the first step to having the opportunity to practice nursing in any of the aforementioned countries so this is the writing test and i'm going to explain into details i wrote i out and i passed and i'm here to share with you my experience i mean the tricks and techniques i used in getting things right in here so I'm going to use these illustrations to show you the nitty gritties of a writing test. So the moment you sit for, you register for IELTS. Um, what happens here is that you are going to write four main tests. You will be sitting for the listening test, the reading test, the writing test, and the speaking test. But today, I want to concentrate on the writing test. So if you are a beginner um, in IELTS, or if you have the interest of writing IELTS and you don't really understand the writing test, I mean the conformity of the writing test, then I'm going to talk about that today. You see, the writing test comprises of two tasks. You have the task one and the task two. But for the sake of this video, I mean, I wouldn't want to dive much into the task two. I'll be talking about the tax one. And I'll be giving a brief introduction to the tax one so that you get to know how to respect the very moment you look for IELTS. So um, let's start with the tax one. You'll be asked to describe diagrams. So that may include a line graph, a bar chart, pie chart, table, processes, and map. This is as simple as that. So um, you may get any of these diagrams to describe, and you have to do that within 20 minutes. You also have to write 150 words or more. Writing less than 150 words means that you have actually failed the exams. They want to know whether you can um, use certain terms and terminologies to describe these diagrams. So you don't have to panic, there's a trick and strategy to go about this and I'll be showing that in a moment. So um, I got this line graph, so as you can see with the illustration here, um, you'll be given a graph containing lines and you'll be asked to write a description of it, I mean describe it, talking about the highest and lowest, talking about where there's an increment and where there's a decrease, I mean and a whole lot of that. There are a lot of things you have to view on the line graph to write about. This is also the bar chart, you'll be given a bar chart where you are to um, report on needs and then talk about the highest and lowest the equals and all those things so i'll be showing the tricks and techniques here too so if you are actually not well versed in the writing test you don't have to worry all you have to do is to continue watching my videos because i'll be going step by step to let you understand it to the fullest so this is a pie chart you will also be given a pie chart where you are to talk about certain items in the pie chart then again you'll be given a table to describe i was fortunate i had a table only one table to describe and it was actually easy so you don't have to worry you shouldn't panic at all you just have to get the tricks and techniques and you are good to go then the process the process has to do with um telling how certain things are done for example you can be asked to describe how electricity is generated how maybe um um chocolate is produced or how um, um as i said electricity is produced how um plants manufacture food i mean it's much more of process how cement is made so you may get a question like that and the map, you may be asked to describe a map. I mean, where they, they will give you um, two maps for one specific country. So, for example, they will give a map of Ghana um, representing 1982, and they will give another one representing somewhere 2015, and they will ask you to actually report on the differences, similarities, what has been removed, and I mean, what has been added. It's not difficult. I will show you the truth in a moment. So, um, this is actually all about the writing text. Um, there are times you may be given two of the diagrams to describe. So, you can get a line graph and a bar chart. Um, in the tax one and you have to describe them in unison you can also get two pie charts and you have to describe them as well you can get a table and a pie chart and you have to describe them as well and um you can also get a line graph and a table but i've not seen uh, the combination of process and let's say a table i've not seen the combination of process and a bar chart um, usually when you are giving the process you only have that to describe and um that is true for the map as well so i mean um, it's nothing difficult so the next thing is i'm going to show you the tricks and techniques you have to use when it comes to the tax one so if you want to get that then um come with me to the next video i'm going to explain that into details as i said i'm going to do that gradually i want to take everything step by step so i'm going to start with the buy chart where i'll show you the tricks and techniques to use to actually grab the concepts there
so if you are here once again i officially welcome you to my ios class if you are part with me in my previous video i talked about the tax one where i outlined the various charts you'll be asked to describe so today i'm going to show you the format to writing the tax one and if time permits i would um, talk about the individual tricks you need to inculcate to get them right remember you only require to use 20 minutes to write the tax one and you are to write 150 words or more but you shouldn't write more than that because you don't have enough time but then it's woe for you to write something less than 150 it's a total fail and you must take note of that so it requires practice to actually get here i'll also show you how to know if you have written less than 150 words or more than 150 words you don't have to worry just follow this class and you'll get things right I, i'm here to share with you my experience and i believe that um you get there i mean so today i'm going to show you the format for writing the tax one and it applies to all this regardless of whichever chart you get when you get a line graph the format i'm going to show you works when you get a bar graph the format i'm going to show you works when you get a pie chart the format i'm going to show you works when you get a map it works in the same manner so all you have to do is to just grab that concept and you are good to go if you are ready then let's zoom into it so before i commence um if you are new here, I would want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more of my teachings, I mean my IELTS teachings. As part of talking about life that I also teach about IELTS, I think I have to use every opportunity I have to share my experience with people who want to practice their nursing outside the country and are sitting for IELTS. So if you are that person, then I think this is the right channel for you because I'm going to go step by step and I'll be sharing with you my experience alongside. So um, I forgot to talk about this. The writing comes in two types. You have the um, writing IELTS academic. And we have the general training so with the general training you will be writing a letter yeah um yeah in the academic we have it so usually nurses sit for the ios academic and that's why you can see academic tax one so that is why we'll be describing the diagrams and a whole lot of that so today i'm going to show you the format now um when you get the tax one paper in front of you it's either you are going to see a line graph as i mentioned earlier or you'll be seeing a bar chart or a pie chart or a map, a process, um, a line graph, and what have you. It's likely you get one of these to report on. The format I'm going to show you here applies to all. So, um, the format I want to show you is actually what you are seeing here. And this applies to all the tax one um, diagrams. So the first thing is to get your introduction ready. And the introduction can be gotten from the question that is, that is being given. So you, have to, you just have to paraphrase the question and when I say paraphrase, you just have to use um, different words to um, write the introduction. You're not going to copy the exact words in the question. And I'm going to demonstrate this right on the computer for you to see, so you don't have to worry. I just want to give you an overview so that you know how it goes. I'll demonstrate everything on the computer for you to see. So you just have to put down your introduction. So you just have to paraphrase the question, but you have to make sure that everything you've stated um, is exactly the same as what is in the question. The next thing is the overview. The overview here is um, you have to actually look at the general impression of the diagram and um, talk about it so usually with overview you have to talk about two distinct things about the diagram so i usually look at the highest and the lowest and um i wouldn't want to dive much but when i begin showing you on the computer with the various diagrams you get to understand how the overview is so more it's more or less like the conclusion people usually prefer to bring the overview after the body but i, I don't advise you do that usually go by this method after your introduction write your overview and as I said, the overview is the general thing you see about the diagram. At least you can still have about two of them in here and you are good to go. So, um, one thing about the tax one is that if you don't write your overview, automatically um, you have failed. So that is why it is advisable that right after the introduction, you write your overview. Now, when you are done with your overview, you come to your body. You see, every SJ should have a body. And even if I should talk about the tax, you realize that um, you have to write a body. So the tax one too has a um, body. And here, it should be structured in paragraphs. Paragraph 1, paragraph 2, paragraph 3. I usually limit myself to paragraph 2. Uh, meaning that I only consider the body having two paragraphs. For, to, just to save time. Because, you know, you only have 20 minutes to finish up the tax one. And you have to write 150 words. So, for my practice, I realize that usually when I'm at paragraph 2, I'm actually due for the 150 words. I don't have to bother. Or I don't have to waste time um, writing another paragraph. So, the paragraph 3 comes in when you actually believe that... Um, the number of ways you have written is not up to 150 ways. I hope that is really understandable. Yeah. So basically, at the end of your tax one, you should have 
at most five paragraphs and at least four paragraphs it's as simple as that so the introduction forms one paragraph you have you form another paragraph and your body you get about two paragraphs or um three paragraphs making a total of five so that is much of time we don't take to zoom onto the computer and then demonstrate how these things work so come with me <laughs> so um i'm going to demonstrate to you how to write an introduction using the question on the screen so this is actually a bar chart so if this is your first time seeing mm, a bar chart i mean this is actually how it looks like so you can get this and we have to give a description of it to understand so per the format i showed you the introduction overview body i'm going to go step by step for you to get a concept because i'm here to share with you my experience i want you to grab the whole thing and i mean crush the writing test once and for all because it pays to actually fail writing test in ielts i mean um you shouldn't afford to fail so without wasting much time let's see so i want you to critically look at the question the bar chart question so this is a tax one question and there's a possibility that you can get only a bar chart so um you can see the question which states that the graph below shows information about the activities that New Zealand and Australian children enjoy doing the most in 2007. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features. Keep that in mind. You have to report the main features and make comparisons where necessary. So when it comes to writing the type there are two things involved. You have to report on the main features and you make comparisons where necessary. So they actually want to see if you can actually perform or report. I mean, if you can see and report well on the diagram as well as make the necessary comparison so these are the two things you must keep in mind now with that done um, i'm going to show you how to write the introduction so you can see a lot of illustrations here so as i said you have to paraphrase the question and the question is what i just read so you have to paraphrase that to paraphrase that you have to change most of the words in the question so you can see that um i have about three different introductions here for the same question you can i mean frame your own i mean you see we are all coming from different places the all different English words, and I mean, you may have more words to turn around. You understand? So these are, I mean, three of the introductions I've been able to paraphrase from the question I just read. So my first introduction is the bar chart illustrates six activities that the young people of Australia and New Zealand show much interest in most in 2007. So this is actually one format of writing the introduction. You have to paraphrase. So you can see that instead of um the graph, I added bar graph that has actually added some kind of ingredient to my introduction the bar wasn't stated in the question but i know the diagram is a bar graph so you have to consider that so usually you have to look at the diagram there is a line graph you can see the line graph last week so this is one way to paraphrase i've added something that is not part of the question that shows that i'm good at the english language now let's move on you can see that i have represented illustrate which shows in the question it says the graph below shows so instead of the shows i have replaced it with illustrates so this is another way of paraphrasing so what i used to do is that i usually had three words i mean that meant the same as shoes so one of them is illustrate represent demonstrate so you can choose your own so that as and when you, they come forth you just have to change them and you are good to go so you see the introduction is not that difficult eh? if it's difficult i mean leave that in the comment section and let me see i want to hear your comment about this so you can see that in the question there was nothing like six but i can actually see from the question that the activities the australian people are interested in are six and they are art and craft making one books computer games dvd going to park and sports so that is why i added the six activities so this is one way of also paraphrasing adding things i'm looking at how the diagram goes and then adding in accordance so the bar graph illustrates six activities that the young people so instead of australian children or instead of children I replaced that with young people of Australia and New Zealand. Shows much interesting. So it says, enjoy doing the most. So you can see I have paraphrased most of the most of the words in the question have been changed, considering my first introduction. So that is how you paraphrase. You just have to change some of the words, but it should mean the same as how it is in the question. Now let's move to look at the second introduction. The bar chart. So there's only one chart there. Represents. You shouldn't forget your subject verb agreement. It's very, very important. Your introduction is your first impression. The very moment they spot a mistake or a grammatical error in here, it gives them the impression that you are not good at the English language and that you are going to make more mistakes in the body. So you just have to be, I mean, memorize or just practice how to write your introductions right because that's the first impression. I know first impression counts, right? Yeah. So the bar just represents six interesting activities. So you can see how I've turned the whole thing around. 
says interesting activities that are mostly done in 2007 by New Zealander and Australian children. So you can see that I've also turned the second introduction around. I didn't copy cut the words in the question, I changed them. That means that they have been well paraphrased. That is the meaning of paraphrase. That is how to paraphrase your introduction. So you look at a question and then you paraphrase them, you structure them in a way that means the same as how it is in the question. Now let's move on to look at the third introduction. The bar graph shows data. So in the question it says the bar, the graph below shows information. So in place of the information, I have represented that with data. The bar graph shows data regarding the activities enjoyed the most by Australian children and New Zealanders in 2007. So there are lots of ways to write the introduction, but just that you shouldn't copy the words verbatim. When you do that, the impression is that you are not good at the English language and automatically you are failing. If you have any question regarding the introduction, I mean leave it in the comment section below and I will attend to you. If there's any other thing you don't understand, um, I'm here to help you out. So this is how to write the introduction. You just have to paraphrase the um, question. But bear in mind, you are going to report the main features and then make comparisons in the body. So the next thing I'm going to show you is to how to write the overview. This is very, very important. It's one of the, should I say, the engine or the heart of tax one. If you write without writing an, if you write tax one without writing an overview, it's like um, we've done nothing at all. But let me put it that way. So let's go and see how to write the overview.